Hey everybody, Joe here again. In this video, we're diving into a topic that might seem simple, but it's incredibly important, crafting a great business name. I'm excited about this lesson because I spent a long time coming up with a name for Avalon Accounting. I put a lot of thought into it, and I'd like to pass along everything that I learned so that you can find your name in a fraction of the time that I took. Your business name isn't just a few letters thrown together. It's the foundation of your brand, the first impression you'll make on your audience, and something you'll be living with for a long time. As we go through this video, we'll be covering some key aspects of naming your business. We'll talk about what makes a good business name, why understanding your business goals is critical to this process, and we'll even break down some real world examples of good, bad, and could be better business names. We'll also walk through a step-by-step -step process that will help you come up with a name that not only sounds good, but also aligns with your brand and long-term goals. So all that and nothing else coming right up. So what is it that makes a business name both functional and one that truly stands out? I like to think that a great name checks off several key boxes and I'll walk you through each one of them now. The first is simplicity. You want a name that's easy to spell and easy to remember. Think of some of the biggest brands like Apple, Nike, or Google. Their names are short, sweet, and easily recognizable. The next is relevance. Your name should give people some idea of what your business does. If you're operating a bookstore, having books or reads in the name could be a good idea. That being said, being too on the nose can limit you down the road, so finding a balance is key. For example, Avalon Accounting is relevant to, well, people looking for accounting services, and the Avalon name can easily be used in other lines of business as well. We're building Avalon Academy to provide business education to Canadians, for example. Up next is the uniqueness of your name. You'll want a name that sets you apart from your competitors. It's not just about standing out, it's also about ensuring that your name isn't easily confused with existing businesses. This is especially important for search engine optimization or SEO. I'd say that Avalon doesn't check this box off too well. A quick walk around town here and I can see at least four other Avalon named businesses. Fortunately, the marketing methods we've implemented have set Avalon accounting apart from the other Avalons around town. We'll discuss those methods in more detail in day four's lessons. Another important factor for a name is that it's easy to remember. A memorable name is often a result of the previous three characteristics. Simple, relevant, and unique names have a tendency to stick in people's minds, which is invaluable when it comes to branding and customer acquisition. Lastly, we want something that's adaptable. Ask yourself, can this name grow with my business? If you start with Toronto Plumbing, it might be a little harder to expand your services into the whole of Ontario, let alone Canada. It's still possible, but probably confusing for your Lethbridge customers calling up Toronto Plumbing to fix their leaky pipes. So think long-term and choose a name that's adaptable. To recap, a good business name is simple, relevant, unique, memorable, and adaptable. So keep these five points in mind as we move on to the next section, where we'll talk about how your business goals should inform the name that you choose. Hey guys, quick 45 second pause from our content to share some exciting news. We'll soon be dropping a seven day business starter course for Canadian entrepreneurs who are struggling to get their business off the ground. We've met so many entrepreneurs with amazing ideas who got stuck in the planning phase or bogged down with questions about legal stuff, taxes, and the CRA. That's exactly why we created this course. Our experience working with hundreds of small business owners allowed us to come up with a complete toolbox to help you launch your Canadian business in seven days. We'll guide you through straightforward planning, business registration, accounting system setup, and effective marketing strategies to turn your exciting idea into your very first sale. And the fun part is that we started a brand new business just to show you how all these steps come together in real life. Interested? Click on the link below to learn more and grab a special pre-launch discount available for our YouTube viewers. All right, thanks for hanging in there. And now back to the good stuff. All right, let's have a frank discussion about your intentions for your business. Your business goals can directly impact the type of name that you should choose. Firstly, your name should align with your long-term vision for the business. If you envision growing into a multi-service empire, you'll want to select a name that's broad enough to accommodate this growth. 
you probably don't want to name your business Vancouver Dog Walking Services if you plan to eventually offer grooming, training, and pet sitting across Canada, right? So this goes hand in hand with the issue of scalability. Your name should be flexible enough to grow and evolve with your business. If your business goals involve scaling up or expanding into new markets, consider a name that doesn't geographically or thematically limit you. And one more thing to consider, are you the business or is the business separate from you? Some entrepreneurs choose to name the business after themselves, especially if they're consultants, artists, or professionals. And this is fantastic for personal branding, but can present challenges if you ever wanna sell the business or bring in partners. On the flip side, if you see the business as its own entity that could eventually function without you, it's wise to choose a name that reflects that independence. We chose to go with Avalon Accounting instead of Collins, Sharp, and Associates for this reason. And well, yes, lots of other reasons too, but let's move on to critique some real world examples of business names. All right, let's get judgy. We'll start on the positive side and look at some good examples of business names. First up, Netflix. Netflix is a combination of internet and flicks. <laughs> the name is incredibly straightforward and relevant to the service that it provides. It's also broad enough that the business was able to completely change its model from ordering DVDs online to providing fully streamed content, including movies, TV shows, documentaries, and more. It's simple, relevant, unique, memorable, and adaptable. I rate this name five stars. Next up, we've got Shopify. The name clearly indicates what the business is about, setting up shops online. It's simple, relevant, and easy to remember. The name is broad enough that it won't limit the company from taking other verticals within the e-commerce industry. Shopify checks all the boxes. Let's add it to the cart of names I'm buying and move on. All right, enough of the positivity. Let's look at a couple of bad examples. First up, let's visit the wonderful world of accounting firm naming. If you heard the name Deloitte Touche Tomatsu LLC for the first time, you might have no idea what it was and never mind trying to spell it without some help. Thankfully, they've shortened the name and are commonly referred to as just Deloitte. They've overcome their cumbersome name and are one of the leading audit and accounting firms worldwide. Now here's one in the not so good column and I'm going to first spell it before I say it. X-O-B-N-I, pronounced Zobni, was a San Francisco based company that made software applications including products for Microsoft Outlook and mobile devices. As you may have guessed, this name comes with some challenges for pronunciation and even relevance until you realize that it's actually the word inbox spelled backwards. You'll be happy to know that this is another example where an imperfect name still led to the company being purchased by Yahoo for more than $60 million. Next, we've got a great example of how a name doesn't need to perfectly match all of our criteria to be good enough so that it won't hold your business back. For this example, we're traveling to Paul's hometown of Smithers, British Columbia. The business is called Paul's Bakery. Unfortunately, the name is just a coincidence and not actually Paul's Bakery. He does, however, own one of their beautiful hats. This is a good example because although initially named after the business owner, Paul, the business has since been sold and still operates under the name Paul's Bakery. The name is simple and to the point. When you hear Paul's Bakery, you immediately know what to expect. Breads, pastries, sweets, and treats baked with thoughtfulness and attention. The name is also relevant and easy to remember. And although the name is maybe a bit less unique and adaptable, you could certainly find examples of similarly named businesses that have scaled internationally. Think Ben & Jerry's ice cream, Newman's own salad dressing, Sam Adams beer, or even just Wendy's to name a few. And this illustrates a key point to remember, which is that naming is subjective and there really isn't a perfect version of a name. I spent weeks coming up with a name for Avalon Accounting. It turned out well, but I probably didn't need to stay in the planning phase for quite that long. Done is better than perfect. So don't be like Joe, pick a name that you like and that checks most of these boxes and move on. Speaking of moving on, let's move on to the step-by-step -step name selection process. All right, step one is to brainstorm some ideas. Start by jotting down words, feelings, and themes that resonate with the kind of business you're planning to start. This is your creative space, so let your thoughts flow freely. Review your list of names and ideas and come up with one or two that resonate with you. Keep in mind our criteria for a great business name. Simple, relevant, unique, memorable, and adaptable, or SUMRA for you acronym lovers out there. 
and ensure that you consider your business goals so the name aligns with your vision for the business. Step two is online presence. Once you've narrowed down your top choices, we're going to do a search to see if someone is already using your proposed name in Canada or internationally if you plan to sell outside of Canada. Next, check for web domain availability, focusing on .ca domains to start with and .com domains if you're looking to sell internationally. It's also helpful to verify the availability of social media handles at this stage, but don't worry if you need to modify the handle a little bit. We found that at Avalon Accounting was taken on most platforms, so we went with at Avalon CPA without losing effectiveness. Step three is gathering feedback. With a name or short list of names picked out, it's time to gauge some reactions. Talk to friends, family, or even potential customers to get their opinions. Remember this feedback is valuable for understanding how your audience perceives your business name. Step four is to search national name databases. Before falling in love with a name, make sure it's actually available. In most cases, if someone is already using a name, you can't legally use it. By law, the name of your business can't be the same as or very similar to an existing business name or trademark. And even when it's legal to use an already existing business name, it can be a disastrous marketing mistake. There are two national databases that cover most of the jurisdictions you may want to search in Canada. These are the Canadian Corporate Names and Trademarks Database and Canada's Business Registries Database. Step five is to perform trademark checks to ensure that your selected name doesn't infringe on existing trademarks. This is crucial to avoid legal issues down the line. We've actually seen established businesses forced to rebrand years down the road because a similarly named pre-existing business took legal action against them. It's expensive and can seriously hurt your brand awareness. I will add one extra disclaimer here that consulting with a trademark lawyer can be a good idea if your proposed business name is a common one or potentially in use. And lastly, you'll make your final decision. Pick a name that you love and that aligns with your business goals, strategy, and branding. And one last time, remember that done is better than perfect. All right, I hope you found this video both entertaining and helpful when it comes to naming your business. Please consider subscribing to the channel as we're set on helping as many people as possible and growing this channel past 100,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.